Nick Gallo, KC Thunder. Uh, Shay, the, the tempo tonight was something that Mark talked about and the way that you guys were really kind of able to rev things up speed-wise in the fourth quarter. Why do you think uh, you guys were able to kind of consciously do that? Um, I don't know. I think we... Um, I think we're starting to figure out like what it takes to win games, um, and that's like the only thing that's on our minds. Um, and then we just try to be present in every moment and trying to win a possession, and then hopefully it stacks up and leads up to a, a W. You hit Chet on a couple pick and pops just to to get things going. Um, is that one of those kind of comfort things at this point now that um, you can get into a rhythm with? Yeah, um, Chet obviously can really really shoot it. Um, and if teams, if teams um, want to be in a drop coverage um, and let him shoot it, then I'm gonna play to our strengths for sure. Shay, and, and asking Mark about you know some of the those and ones you had tonight, just the, some of them obviously being for most people impossible. He just mentioned your core and just some of the body work you've had that, that contributes to that. I just wonder what's all going into being able to hit stuff like that off balance without proper footing, just that kind of thing. Um. Yeah, a lot of core strength. I work on my core a lot. That's the, that's the main thing I work on in the summertime. Um, and then uh, I'm always working on my touch um, around the basket. And then uh, I just I just try to focus. Um, after you get hit you and you have a shot to make it a three-point play, it's worth the, the second of focus to try and get three points. Uh, Sometimes you just throw it up there, but I, I try to focus after I get here for sure. Yeah, and he, and he said looking back at the tape from, from your first year, um, he just sees a dramatic difference in your body and just that, that sort of thing. I just wonder what you can see. I mean, obviously you look at yourself every day, so you probably can't see the difference, but if you could recollect what you were like back then, just can you recall just the dramatic difference in your body from then and now? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a, a whole lot stronger. Um, that's that's what I, I plan to do. I knew that. I was my body wasn't a finished product when I came into the NBA, um, and it's a main focus of mine every off season, especially. And I, uh, I try to get uh, bigger and strong. Well, not necessarily bigger, but I try to get stronger every off season for sure. Uh, Mark also mentioned Shay, that you, um, you just have a, a, a better feel for like when contact is gonna come and getting the gather and 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 you know the the process to get a, another shot. Have you? Is that something you just learned from from playing? Is it something you've studied? Um, yeah, it's just feel. Um, I've been in that situation so many times. I've got fouled a lot. Um, yeah, being able to convert those into free throws and shot shot attempts is, is just feel. I think somebody was the, the historically six. The NBA's only charted these since like 1997, but that's tied for the most anybody's ever had six and ones in a game. How does that strike you? That's cool. Um, I'm surprised someone like Giannis hasn't had more, but. It's cool. Shay, you talked a lot about your craft and just working on your touch and different things in, the, in your game. What all goes into that? Like, how do you discover some of these new windows and new angles off the glass that, like, most guys wouldn't even try, but you're hitting it consistently? Um, I think some of it has to do with, like, growing up, I always had, like, the ball in my hand, and I always was, like, like playing around the basket. I always, like... If I'm like just on the court, I'll like spin the ball to the glass in a certain way. Like I'm always like trying shit, and trying stuff, and uh, playing with the ball on the court. Um, so so, and I've been and I've basically done that my whole life. So I feel like that's kind of the ease to it. Like it's just what I've done with the game my whole life and what I've been uh, accustomed to. And piggybacking off a couple other questions from earlier about your finishing through contact and just tough finishes, like how do you simulate that in the off season without like hurting yourself and like staying healthy? Because it seems like like I'm imagining you almost like a BMX guy, like going on the, like the foam squares, like when you're launching yourself at the basket. Um, a, a, a lot of times in the summer I go live, um, so I'm playing with contact. Um, so that when I get in the game, I'm used to it. Now we obviously do stuff to prevent injury, but um, we try to make it as uh, physical as, uh, as we can in the, in the off season so that I'm used to it. You guys just had a 10 game streak of shooting 50% or more from the field. 
in tonight um, and during that streak and even tonight, you guys have been generating some really good looks. It just didn't fall as much tonight. But uh, what do you feel like has been one of the biggest keys for you guys to get all those good looks, uh, a lot of them open? Play the right way. Um, play for each other. And we're all being aggressive and playing to our strengths. And then I feel like a lot of that is also great or because of the gravity that you've been creating uh, this year. It seems like it's been increased. And, what goes into you being able to know exactly where the guys are? Because it seems like you're hitting hitting them exactly where they need it. Um, we've, uh, like, as teams throw different coverages and things at me, um, I get used to them uh, as well as my teammates. So um, as we have gone through this journey the past couple of years, we've um, seen a lot of coverages and, like, I see them initially, but then they see them on the back end, and they see the windows and where to get open and how to play out of those windows. So um, I think it's just us as a team getting better at attacking schemes. So in, as much as we talk about the and ones finishing through contact, the other part of that equation is you know getting downhill, getting to those spots. And I, I wonder because it felt like a couple times tonight, move probably more than a couple, um, as you're turning the corner, you know it's almost like you're bouncing off of guys. The guys are like very cautious as to to not foul you. Um, because you are maybe more fallible than other players. I just wonder what all goes into turning the corner so easy and, and just getting downhill as easy as you have been. Um, I'm, I'm, not too I'm not too sure. I've, uh, I've been a guy that's touched the paint my whole career. Um, so I think at, at this point it's just natural for me um, finding out ways how to get my feet in the paint and then make plays from there. Um, something that I've just always done. What have you seen from Vasa from this time at the beginning of training camp all the way till now, adjusting to the NBA game? Yeah, um, he's, he's he's gotten better. Uh, from day one, we saw like Vasa is like an extremely smart and skilled basketball player. Um, and when you're smart and that skilled, you can be thrown anywhere and figure it out and have success. And that's what we're seeing. Um, you, you have a ball in your hand a lot, and then you dribble a lot, of course. And then, um, but you don't turn the ball over much, and you have you have a zero turnover today. Uh, how do you do that? Like, what is the important things not to do th that? Um, I try to make the simple plays out there. Um, I try to take what the defense gives me, and I try to not uh, force things. Yeah, show you lead the league in steals. 87 total steals, like 27 more than anybody else in the league. And last year at 112, the year before you had 71. Like what? What has changed? Like what is so? What, what makes you getting uh, so this many steals so much easier? Hmm. I. I'm, I I feel like I'm getting smarter defensively. Um. Like uh, like everybody goes into a game with like an offensive game plan. Personally, as a player. Um, and I've started to uh, kind of figure out the defensive side of things um, and figure out what teams want to do offensively and try to take it away um, and then try to pick my spots where I can gamble um, and be successful. Is that just mostly through like watching film or what's like your process? Um, I think it's just, yeah, I watch a lot of basketball. So uh, not necessarily film, but like at home, the, like the games are always on the TV. Yeah. So I'm watching guys, I'm watching their tendencies. Um, so it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a film session, but I guess you can call it. Do that. you take do you take notes on that, or is that just like mental notes? Yeah, it's just like like just watching the game. Like if I'm watching Chicago, and I know Demar was in pump fake stuff like that, yeah. and he likes to get to the post. So like things like that. Like I'm just always watching and, and watching for guys' tendencies. Jalen, you guys have talked about being able to win a lot of different types of games. Um, What's sort of the recipe for a night like tonight? Stops, because we did not shoot well. <laughs> um, yeah, anytime you can kind of hold the team to 100 or, you know, kind of blow that, like we've been able to do the last couple games, um, it makes having off nights a lot easier just because we're getting stops on the other end too. Um, usually where teams kind of fall apart is when the offense isn't working, It you know, it, or not working, but when you're not hitting shots and getting good looks, it kind of dictates how you play on defense. I thought we were just able to kind of get timely stops, um, kind of force them into some shots they didn't want to shoot, and kind of were able to get that way, kind of get our transition to it. I think we had like 16, 
steals or something like that for 23 points. So just when you're able to kind of add to that, I think that kind of helped us, you know, kind of build that 12 point lead. And then we've been playing with the lead a lot this year and come back from some games. So we had a good, good kind of game plan going into that. Uh, you guys really forced Paolo to work tonight. Uh, a lot of different guys saw time on him, but Lou, the majority of it, uh, there was a moment where, where Paolo kind of rolled his eyes when he saw that Lou was checking in at the same time as, as him. What, what do you sense, you know, opposing frontline guys or headline guys feel out there with, with Lou guarding him? Probably that eye roll. Um, he's a good player too, so, um, you know, we like to put our best defender out there, Lou, and uh, he understands his role and he's going to, you know, do it to the best of his capability. Um, I think it gives him confidence too when, you know, he has us behind him ready to help him out and understand what we're trying to accomplish on the offensive end. Uh, so, yeah, when you have good players like that, you want to throw different looks at them and kind of just make it tough. And then obviously when it's Lou at the forefront of that, it's already pretty difficult. And uh, he did he did a good, really good job tonight. Dub, you had a big bucket in the fourth quarter and it looked like you tapped your wrist. Uh, maybe you said dub time. Can you just talk about your confidence in the fourth? No comment. <laughs> well, in a different way, you've talked about being Jalen versus Dub, is that something like? Is that something you can just turn on? Is this like, is like a Hulk thing where it just happens? Um, nah. It probably like looks that way just because you know we joke around about it a lot. But um, just with basketball, there is no switch that you can just turn on and off. Um, that's a muscle that you constantly have to flex. Whether it's the first quarter, um, basketball preparation starts the day before, so it's not like I'm going into the game like, all right, I'm gonna turn it on now. There's probably like three players in history that probably do that. And even then, it's still an approach going into a lot of the game where you're locked in and you're just kind of letting the game come to you and understand what's there. And then I'm just able to find more of a rhythm and aggressiveness coming into that fourth quarter. And obviously, I probably got to be a little better just in the beginning of the game trying to do that. But we have such a talented team. I think I'm going to find shots and be open in that way. Uh, Chet got it going a little bit during that stretch as well. so. Obviously, Shea did his thing, so I'm just trying to find whatever happens. But it's not a switch I'm turning. I feel like that the whole game. Jalen, Shea had six and ones. The NBA's only charted this since, like, <laughs> it's only charted this since 97, but that ties the most anybody's had uh, in a game. What is it about his ability to, to deal with contact and play through it and still finish? I have no idea. you got to ask him. That's tough. Um, he has good control over his body. I think that, that probably helps. Good balance. You see how low he gets on a – a constant basis, but I'm just guessing, to be totally honest. Um, but he, yeah, he does a good job of understanding, you know, how to get to the line and uh, something I'm trying to learn. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think it's just body control, kind of knowing where the contact's coming from, uh, manipulating the defense a little bit. And then on a night like tonight, the way they play, um, you guys run great stuff, but, but how important is it that guys like you and Shay can just go get something when things are a little bogged down? Um. Yeah, I don't really think it's – it's tough. I think when you run a play, especially now, like teams know what you're going to run for the most part. I think a lot of it is trying to confuse it and create small advantages. Um, you know, we have a lot of good players on the floor, so regardless of what play we're running, it's the NBA. Like, you know, you have other NBA players on the other end that are going to do a good job of guarding the action. But I think for us, we have a lot of dual threats on the floor, so it gives us a lot more space to kind of create and and do that. And um, – I think when you have that, it makes it easier for me to kind of pick my spots. Shea, obviously. Um, so I think it's more of like a group controlled effort of where we're able to pick our spots. And um, we're just kind of taking advantage of that. Guys are also cutting and hitting shots, so it makes it easy. Dub, there, in, in talking about Shea's and ones, there was a moment there in the fourth quarter where Paulo had fouled Shea, and he was like adamant about the call, and he, he gets back toward the baseline to line up beside you. And he says something. I, I won't ask you what he said, but. Whatever he said, you laughed, and and I just I wonder, you know, as you you see Shea have games like this, like, do you get a good sense of you know how exhausted guys are of just having to get in front of him? Yeah, I guard him at practice and during the summer, so yeah. I know exactly what they're going through. <laughs> but um, like I said, he's good at manipulating the defense. You know, um, does a good job of mixing up the shots he takes as well. So I feel like defense is constantly um, off balance. But probably should ask Lou maybe. They'd be guarding each other, so. <laughs> yeah, but he, like I said, he mixes up the shots he takes, so it kind of keeps a lot of people off balance and 
And then obviously with the pump fakes and the kind of like rip throughs and stuff like that, like he's really smart at it. So it's kind of hard to figure out and get a rhythm for how to guard him. Yeah, and, and it feels like so many of those shots, like especially tonight, some of those were like virtually impossible, just how little balance there is, how, how little maybe proper footing per se there is. Like have you, can you remember seeing that level of, you know, so little balance, so little footing and, and still being able to hit those shots from anybody besides that? Probably Luca. That's probably the only other person, but I think even I think Shea's kind of in his own category. I think just from the how different of a player they are, um, it may look like he's off balance to like everybody else, but he kind of understands how how he feels shooting it. And like for us, when we've seen it so many times, like I don't want to say you know, but you you kind of know the spot he's at, and like. You almost don't even like you kind of get caught watching almost because you know he's kind of bumping and figuring out what he wants to do with it and then like i said he has just a lot of mixture of different shots and then he'll pass one so it it's hard to i feel like really get a grip on what he wants to do Andrew, I just want to ask about the fourth quarter again so you have the most fourth quarter points total fourth quarter points in the last 12 games in the nba is there is there something that's like happened recently that's like giving you more confidence is it lineups is it just like getting catching a rhythm because i mean that's obviously like something special um not really um just trying to take what the defense gives me throughout the game you know there are games where i might score a lot in the first half and then how the game goes we have so many other good players on the team it's like all right he might get going so now my focus diverts to trying to get him more shots or if I see Isaiah Joe hasn't shot any threes and he's the best shooter in the NBA, I'm probably going to try and get him some shots. So I think the fourth quarter thing is just me being a little more aggressive, kind of reading the game. I think a lot of the games we've had, they've been close. So when I start that fourth quarter unit, I'm trying to hunt shots a little more. But I think overall, I think just the group we're in with, I think it's easy to kind of just play off of and I end up getting shots and then I got to make them. So. You guys talk about like how dangerous that makes you as a team that you can kind of take over like the first part of the fourth and then Shea kind of comes in and kind of finish. You guys talk about that or is it just something that's happening? Um, I think the biggest thing I talked about, especially just because me and Chet kind of have that, that lineup, um, trying to play more off of each other and, and utilize what we have there. Um, anytime we can get to a little more rest and not have to play 40 minutes a game because we can kind of stretch a lead out, I think takes pressure off him to have to come in right away and you know be really productive and you know he sees doubles all night. so. Anytime we can be a threat with that group in, um, specifically in the fourth quarter with just how we stagger our minutes, I think that's special. And, you know, Chet and the rest of the group that that's in because it does fluctuate who's usually in, but we kind of understand that. So a lot of it is just trying to get stops more than, than score the ball. Nick Allo, KC Thunder. Uh, Lou, you know, you guys won a, a high scoring on your end shootout a couple nights ago. This is a lot different of a game. Um, what would you like best about the way that you guys can mentally shift gears, understanding what type of game it's going to be and still get a win? Uh, just the way we get ready for teams. I mean, um, we knew that this team is a, is a better team than we, that the team we played last game. Uh, you know, they, 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 they have it going. They've been playing well. So, um, you know, we just knew it was going to be a different challenge. So we just had it locked in on the game plan. And, um, you know, you just – see the way that Shea <laughs> operates and converts and finishes. Uh, anything stand out to you about the way that he was able to do it tonight on a night when um, outside shots weren't falling for you guys? Uh, no, nah, I mean, nothing surprised me about what he does anymore. I'm just, I, I see it all now. So, um, you know, that's just the work that he puts in. You know, he's he's so crafty and able to get to the lane and, and finish around guys. So that's, that's just his game, and, you know, he's going to keep doing that for us. Lou, Lou, I'll follow up on that, and I'll ask you because Dub told me to ask you: when, when you're guarding Shay in practice, like, how do you keep him off balance while keeping him from making the shot, while also not fouling him all at the same time? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he's uh, she's a tough player. He's hard to stop. Um, even if you keep him off balance, he's gonna find a way to 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 find his feet and get up, then rise over and anybody and shoot it. So you know it's it's just the play he is. I I don't have an answer for you. Like I'm I'm trying to think about it, but I I, I don't know. 
And some of those impossible shots he hit, especially like the, the ones tonight, like do you by now, have you gotten a good sense of like, oh yeah, like that one can fall, like that one has a chance? Like I said, I'm not surprised anymore. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff that Che did. So now it's just like, wow, good job. Seen it, seen it before. But still, I mean, he, he's, gonna, he's a great player. He's going to knock out some big shots. Following up on that first question that Joel asked, just about guarding Shea, do you ever like feel empathy for the guys guarding him as you like guard some of the best players in the world, and then you see them like play really good defense on him, and it just doesn't matter? Uh, I don't really feel that because you know me and Shea on the same team, and I want Shea to do that to anybody that guards him. So um, yeah, but I, I just I just know it's tough. You know they're trying their best, and they can't they can't stop it. So it is what it is. I mean. Sometimes it's good D, sometimes it's bad D, but he did it. Whoever is in front of him did his job. And then we talked to Shea earlier about having Chet behind him has allowed you guys to be more aggressive defensively, and that creates a lot more steals. What exactly has just Chet being behind there protecting the rim impacted how you play? A lot. I mean, just knowing me, I put a lot of pressure on the ball, and, uh, you know, it happens to get beat. So whenever I, know, whenever I get beat, I know Chet is down there, you know, having our – our back, so um, you know it's 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 huge. It's huge, you know. Just just now the chemistry that we have, and and knowing that, you know, it happens that I can get beat, and and Chad's gonna be down there, so it's 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 huge. Most people, when the uh, shots aren't falling, it's hard to play defense. And you guys were good on twos, but weren't so good on threes. Is any problem with that with you tonight, especially you guarding a guy who's got I don't know five inches on you, or whatever? Um. Uh, I mean, we just got to keep playing hard and compete. I mean, even though the shot wasn't falling, we just got to find a way to get to the rim or, or crash and get a second, second chances or whatever that just can get us going. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, we just got to keep shooting the good looks. You know, if, if it falls or not, we just got to keep shooting them and playing hard. And then, you know, that's what we did. We kept playing hard and try, uh, finding stuff at the rim. So it helped. Lou, you've been doing this for a while now, defending the, the best player on the other team. Doesn't matter if it's a point guard, a wing, you know, pilot tonight, it's power forward. Has your approach or like your preparation changed over time and, and what does that look like today? Uh I mean yeah, they they they're all different players. They're all good at what they do for a reason, but they they don't all do the same thing. So it's um the preparation is just really watching film, the sky report and now been in the league for a little bit now, so I kind of know who I'm going against. But um, you know, today was Paulo. He, you know, he's a great player, great wing. You know, really strong. So um, I just had to be prepared. I just had to get prepared for him. And can get shots on the rim, which you know gives you a chance for an M1, but it also gives you shooting fouls. And I think some of the best guys with the gather rule, the best guys, you know, have a sense for how to do that. And um, it's something that he definitely has learned. I think Chet's got a good instinct for it. I think Jalen's learning it right now so um you know it gives him a chance for some of those plays some of those were really tough yeah. and then some of those plays with him he's he's been so good he's so good at involving other guys he seems to be a, a, an even better playmaker this year but he how does a guy strike a balance between knowing hey things are bogged down a little maybe and i just need to go do it and, and then you know getting it to other guys at other times i think that in an ideal world you know it's off it early you know early in the advantage, early in possessions, try to activate everybody else. And then, you know, one of the luxuries of having a, a guy that can score like he can is on the possessions where you stall out or on the possessions where the defense plays really good defense, he can still manufacture a pretty efficient shot. Uh, and that's a major luxury when you look at uh, NBA possessions, when you get to the second half of the shot clock and nothing's really uh, stirred up, you know, when you got a guy that can, can go get one like he can, you know, it, it keeps a lot of possessions alive for you. Mark, and talk about the Chase and ones. It, it feels like so many of those and, and just so many of the impossible shots he hits are, you know, without any balance at all or, like, without proper footing. I just wonder in your coaching career, maybe just in your entire time viewing basketball throughout your life, can you remember seeing a guy that, that needed so little balance, so little proper footing to, to make some of those shots? I think it's a testament to what he's done with his body, to be honest with you. I think a lot of that stuff comes down to, like, your your base, your core strength. Um, and that's something, you know, if you look back, it's funny. I was looking at a – I was with Grant Gibbs earlier, and we were watching a play from uh, my first year, and uh, he was on the court. And it's just amazing looking back and seeing what he's done physically. 
uh, and all the incremental work. And when you see him every day and every year, you don't really notice it. But when you look back to when he was a rookie and in his second year and third year, um, you know, he's he's definitely invested there and has done it consistently. He does it in the summer. Uh, and I do think some of the stuff you're talking about is a byproduct of the way that he's invested and attacked the program. When you look back at the tape from, from his first year, what did you see? I saw a play that we used to run uh, for Horford that I was thinking about using, but I didn't use it tonight. And, you know, in, in building a team around um, shooting and, you know, shooting with the best in the league, I imagine that that's bound to become such a big part of your identity. But on, on nights like tonight where you go, I think, seven for, for 35 or whatever from, from three, like, I wonder what you've seen from this team in terms of, you know, building a separate identity on nights where the, the ball doesn't go in. It's not a separate identity. I think it's just a recognition, like I said to Nick, uh, that if shots aren't falling, first of all, stay the course, which I thought we did. You know, like keep doubling down and keep getting good shots uh, and trust that they're going to fall eventually uh, and be willing to lose that way, be willing to lose with the right shots. Uh, but also, um, it's not a different identity. It's just doubling down on pace, like I said, coming out of halftime, getting on the offensive glass, which has not been a strength of ours, but has been an emphasis lately. Uh, and I thought we did a good job of that. You guys just had a 10-game streak of shooting 50% or more from the field in tonight, um, first team since 90, 92, 93 to do that. Um, during that streak and even tonight, you guys have been getting some great looks. It just didn't fall as much tonight. But um, what do you feel like has been the one of the biggest keys for you guys generating all those great looks? A combination of things. You know, it's uh, first of all creating advantages. You know, it's hard to get a good look. It's not just ball movement. You know, you have to create an advantage and um, you know being sharp in our actions and creating an initial advantage and then moving it out of the advantage when there's. Uh, not a score available or a shot available. Uh, and then those guys being ready to play quickly on the catch. And um, the team's done a great job of that. It's, you know, we've had a very unselfish spirit uh, really the whole season. And uh, they work together to find the best shots. Uh, and they work together to find the best advantages. And when you do that repeatedly, possession by possession, you can get great shots when you have talented players. We have talented players. And a lot of that kind of seems like it's from the gravity that Shea creates. Is there a way that you guys can practice that? Like, do you guys, like, when in practice, do you corral Shea any time? Or because how do you, I guess, game plan for three or four guys collapsing on Shea and then other guys being in the exact right spot for him to dish it out to him? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's everything. You know, it's, first of all, the guys, it's not just him. You know, his gravity certainly is helpful, but, um, I, he's really the last couple of games. He's really screened. He's gotten us layups on screens. But um, you know, the other thing is like the guys that are creating the collision with him, that are in the action with him, doing so with pace, confusing the defense, using different guys in that. Guys recognizing it in transition quickly. Um, you know, it all has to do with it. And then you know, over that time, even when he's been off the court, we've been able to do that. So I would, I would, you know, argue that he is, as high gravity as he is. Uh, we've been able to do it stylistically across the roster and with a lot of different guys. Um, Shea has proven himself to be one of the best shot makers in the league. You hear a lot of the oohs and ahs from the crowd, but you're pretty even keel on the sideline. Is it ever hard to like contain reactions to a good or bad play? No. <laughs> Andrew Slug like with The Athletic. Um, you guys drive the ball more than any team in the league, like have for several years now. It, was that something that was born out of like just having like this personnel where it's like, hey, we have these guys that drive the ball, or was that like, hey, this is the way we want to play, and this is how we're going to play? Because I mean, there's other teams that have players that like to drive the ball, or good at driving the ball, but like, where, where did that style of play, like, where was it like birthed from? Um, I think more the former. Like, it wasn't like this vision, you know, because you don't know who's going to be on the team when you first start out. Um, so it's really just like. You know, how do you maximize what you have? Um, and everything we're doing now has evolved to this point. You know, so like the cutting is something that um, we had players on the team that they, they weren't guarding, they were just loading up on Shea. And it's like, okay, you know, where do we space them? You know, and we learn different spacings from that. We learn the cutting, you know, the cutting triggers and, and how to activate that from that, you know, experience. Um, the guard to guard stuff was born out of, you know, having shooting fives, undersized fives, non fives playing the five. Um, and it's just like, you know, step by step, it's just we've 
run into a hurdle and figured out a way to solve it. And, and the stuff that's good, we keep and we, we you know, um, cultivate. And that just becomes your system. And a year from now, you know, our system's going to look different because different things will get thrown at us that we'll have to adapt to. We'll trip on different things that'll be effective. Um, and we just want to be like an ever-evolving, problem-solving, you know, group, players, coaches, everybody. Um, and we've done a good job to that point. But it, it wasn't like something like we drew up on a napkin four years ago. Was this a problem, problem solving win? Because if you shoot your normal threes, you probably win pretty comfortable, but you find a way to win anyway. Yeah, and they'd probably say the same thing. I mean, that was, that was a, that was, there was like covers on the hoop in the first half. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely that. And that's what um, you know, I was saying early. I thought we did a great job of kind of manufacturing uh, a win there out of a night that we didn't shoot it particularly well. You know, we did it with pace, did it with rebounding. But, and I also, I think we stayed the course with our style despite the fact that the ball wasn't going, which, which is critical for us. You got to be able to stay with it. And with the, when the shots aren't falling, do you talk about it or do you just, do you run any pet plays? Like when Isaiah comes out there to kind of get him an open look, kind of break the ice and you just keep playing? I talk about it, you know, because I think it's, it's a recognition thing and they feel it. You know, it's not like, you know, it's like, hey, we're, two for whatever we're getting great looks let's keep getting the same ones um when you're having a bad shooting night, i try to draw shooting plays i tried to get chet one in the corner i tried to get isaiah one there late um because i just it, it reinforces that hey like these are the shots we want let's let's keep going for it so uh but the guys did a great job like i said with the rebounding the pace the execution to to offset obviously a rough shooting night mark i think there's some some plus minus stats or whatever but beyond statistically like what it's looked better when Mitzic is in the game lately he just looks a little more comfortable are you are you seeing anything different about him the past few weeks yeah he's um Sam made this he said a statement early in the season and it stuck with me like he's, he needs to catch up to the pitching you know and uh he's so cerebral uh Misic, not Sam Sam's cerebral too but I'm referring to Misic. he's Misic is so cerebral that um you just kind of trust he's going to get there. I mean, you see the guy play in Europe, and he's a wizard. Um, and so, you know, it took him a minute, I think, um, to catch up to the speed of it, athleticism. We were also playing well without him in the mix, so that was a reason that he didn't get an opportunity. But, uh, you know, we saw a window there coming out of Christmas with that second group uh, that we thought, you know, some secondary playmaking um, off the ball would be helpful for them, and that's proven to be true. And I'm really impressed with how he's competed defensively as well. You know, he's obviously not, um, you know, Bruce Bowen, but uh, he's really given effort on that end. He's executing coverages. He's playing physical. He's getting to the ball. You know, he's doing the things he needs to do on that end as well. Anybody else? We'll go last one to Andrew. Come on, Joe. Get off the sidelines. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Um, you guys are tied for first in the West. Yep. Do you ever think that you you may be coaching the Western Conference All Stars? You ever think about that? No. Okay. No. Same answer as Mike. So. Yep. See ya.